there was a really good um, article online about um, kind of how Australia's rock scene has been affected by noise complaints. Oh, and right. it draws. Have you read David Byrne's book How Music Works? No, I've seen it. It's about it. like geography and about how different cultures make music for certain yeah. environments. And they talk about how like everyone stops making rock music now because the neighbours complain. So everyone's making like electronic music yeah. and hushed, chilled out music. And, that makes sense. Like, yeah. uh, was it they said like what happens to all the garage bands when there's no garages to practice in? Mm. <laughs> That's quite an interesting uh, point for me specifically. A band that kind of changed everything is uh, the Arctic Monkeys at the time, um, which is weird because I don't consider them in any way really like a, an influence on me musically, but they kind of broke through with that MySpace thing. MySpace was really prevalent at the time as well. And that idea that you could do it yourself um, really left an impression on me. I think even though I knew about punk rock and stuff like that, I still felt that was something kind of historical. That's something that you can't relate to, you can't really um, associate with. But I remember seeing footage of Alex Turner on Jules Holland or whatever and you see all the acne on his face is so young and you, I've watched that back recently and it's just amazing to think that that happened and that's something that's relatable you see that little kid there kind of and that, they were kids like making music and being successful and I think it wasn't even a successful bit it was just the fact that they put music on MySpace and people listened and it was just yeah it made me feel like oh, maybe we should make a band I already, already liked music but it was just kind of like let's actually start doing something so for Christmas, I asked for a guitar, and I made my brother buy a drum kit. And by that, I made, <laughs> made my mum buy him a drum kit. I was like, he'll really like a drum kit. And then the intention was, we're going to be like, we'll be the brothers in the band, you know? that It sounds really Kings of Leon now, but... Um, and that didn't take off, unfortunately. Didn't what have to. Was found out, that's a much better comparison, <laughs> yeah. kind of got lost track of i think because i messed up a bit on the i didn't make the transition very smooth so it just kind of threw me off i just i wasn't feeling it i just kind of gave up <laughs> and then not, it'll be like i've got this one riff and it could go here and then what happens is together in a room kind of figure out where the rest of it goes but and over the years what's happened is it just seems to be because I, I always really wanted to do more weird noises and matt just started playing more and more kind of rhythmic kind of riff bits and so it kind of almost like shifted yeah the, the kind of that balance and it's really cool because the arrangements now sound really different, but they're still you can still tell it's us playing, even though we've kind of shifted roles. Yes, I'd be very, uh, I'd be very apprehensive to say that it was me doing the songwriting. So I know it might seem that way, I suppose sometimes, but I, f I feel like, well, okay, all, certainly the the kind of the, you bring the skeleton. Yeah, put it yeah, I mean. Together. But but really, you are like, the main course. We are your but, side. But so all, all four of us, I think, you know, it, it wouldn't be the same if, like, because I've written stuff by myself that I've recorded things, and although there are elements of what we sound like in it, it's not a battery. They're not. It's not battery. Yeah, there are differences. Yeah, just going from the very beginning. Uh, is there any way that you can make the sweep um, at the top a little bit brighter? Well, going deeper on that. Got a bit of a ring back to it though that I don't like. Yeah, there's too much ring on it. Too much ring on it. Um, switch. Yes, yeah, back to that pickup because that 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 one's just there's a weird echoey re, like ring back to it, which is just a bit. fairly useless at expressing myself with words or any other art form so music just seemed like the logical one and I'd figured out that using a house key I could get into the music room at school on my lunch break <laughs> so I didn't have to deal with the other children and that's that's kind of where I picked it up. Did you feel like music brought you into kind of like meeting people who were different? Oh yeah yeah uh, and it certainly it helped me just kind of interact with human beings normally because um, uh, I, I always felt like um, you know how like 
you can spot a learning support kid from a fucking mile away because they're wearing the Matrix trench coat and the, the and the things and the, <laughs> yeah. yeah that's a coat, yeah. exactly that that is precisely what I was until somebody planted a guitar in my hand and then I felt like a normal human being so that's that's kind of it's, it was therapeutic just getting into it. short like little projects you can chuck an amp down here and then it's not going to disturb the neighbours as much as it would elsewhere in the house. Uh, how far back towards the bridge can you strum that? Oh yeah that's cool. Makes it, it's got the percussiveness of the baritone but without the depth which is nice. Mm. Reverb on that as well, or not? I was thinking about whacking the distortion on it as well. Before. Try that. Just so it's that yeah. last little push sure. before the end. I was thinking of doing again another clean and distorted, but because usually what happens is that I kind of this is what I play live live is I have to tram on. It's a really convoluted thing. Live is. But this is more layered and it's separate yeah, yeah, yeah. that bit from that. I think I'd say no, we don't. I think with our music, you wouldn't. Uh, you kind of. You wouldn't assume that we're having fun. I don't think the music is. Uh, <laughs> I don't think the music is meant to have fun too. It might be there to engage with you on a level, but it's not there for fun. But when we started the band, when we met in college, we didn't immediately start the band because these guys already had other bands on the go. And uh, but what happened gradually was we just started jamming with each other in like breaks during the lessons and stuff, and just going around Robs and just making up these the most stupid songs yeah, we could think. Yeah. They're always Firm really to bass Yeah, they're always <laughs> really, really silly parody songs or something. Yeah, but I mean, we did that for years, didn't we, really, mm -hmm. before starting a, maybe two or three years before we actually decided to make a proper band. Uh, which is really weird because then creatively we got got a chance to actually kind of uh I was about to say uh feel each other out, but that sounds yeah. really, really dodgy. They're about to get kind of get on the same wavelength and get a uh, a sense of what everyone can do. And then we decided to make the band. So it kind of started from quite innocently, actually, with us. Although my main motivations maybe at first were, you know, let's be successful with, with you know, with myself. I think eventually it became, actually, I just want to play music for these guys and hang out with these guys. So the fun bit is, uh, I think that gets played down a lot. Yeah. It sounds like occultish. It's, it's yeah, like droney. Yeah. So, I don't know if the lead here is a bit too... No, I like that. Yeah. It's got an organ. Yeah, an organ, yeah. We tend to play the songs quite a lot before recording. Because um, they change when we play them live. Little bits are added and you think about them in a different way. Yeah. That's why sometimes when bands hastily record, and then their song, the songs themselves get better after they've recorded them. You kind of feel like they've missed an opportunity sometimes, I think. What chord are you actually playing? To me, my... Yeah, so... Do you mind if I do that? That is... So... I think it was October 
October when we had that Halloween gig. Oh, we were, yeah. We were trying to get that cover of Gary Newman's Cars sort of for the show. <laughs> so we were playing into the evening. And this guy, the guy knocked the door and, and we were like, oh, shit. You know, and Rob sort of goes to the door and you could hear this guy. He's like, look, I'm really, look, I'm really, I'm happy with what you guys are doing. I think it's great. I really do. But it's just too late. My whole house is shaking. <laughs> Sure but that was, the, that was the only, only time. time. That was the only time okay. he complained. Um, that was the only time that anyone complained to us. Mum, to us, Mum yeah. got complaints like quite a lot. Yeah. Oh, she, ne- well, she, she never told your us. Mo- your mother is an absolute saint. So yeah. 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 <laughs> really, this band wouldn't exist it, without yeah, Rob's it, mum. So. It, it, <laughs> they couldn't yeah, definitely. I think if we were to go the route of using practice rings and stuff, you've got to remember that we're young. We don't have a lot of money at the time. We're not. I don't think it, I think maybe I was working at the time, mm. but that was it. And <laughs> we, we wouldn't have been able to afford practice rooms and stuff. And I think also when you're in someone's front room or bedroom playing, uh, it makes things a lot more relaxed as well. And mm. yeah, I think if we didn't have that resource, if we didn't have yours, I don't think the band would have lasted as long as no. it has so far. Not so. at all. 